Hello and welcome to another Divinity Original Sin video. This is a beginner friendly guide from Character Creation Screen um, with some pretty decent information about how to build a two handed warrior in this game. We're going to be covering which races make for good warriors, we're going to go over gear choices, attributes, where you should put your school skills, etc. So let's get into this. So to begin with, which races make... Oh hello beast. Which races make through really good warriors in this game? And I think there is there's a lot of good options actually. Seville makes for a very good two-handed warrior because of their sacrifice 10% damage increase though this is additive not multiplicative because she is a skill user though the one additional AP is still desired. The human characters Ifan and Losa also play a good role as a warrior because of the 5% critical chance and the 10% critical multiplier. Thane makes good for good anything because of just simply how overpowered time warp is. As the ingenious talent as well, critical chance and multiplier increased. Beast I think also does make for a, a decent a viable option. Um, there's not many optimal positions for him in this game, but I think there is a role for him here as a two-handed warrior. Now, he won't ever do as much damage as a human or an elf, but what he does bring is he does look badass as a two-handed warrior. It is quite comedic at times trying to see him hold two-handed weapons, but on a more serious note, there is synergy with some of his talents here. Now, HP is not the be all and end all in this game. It's kind of looked down upon, to be honest. But it does play a role for him in this position because Sturdy gives him 10% maximum vitality, and there's the talents and the way that you will build your warrior that really synergizes really well. He can end up with an absurd, absurd amount of HP at the end of the game, and it's not really going to take anything away from your damage by doing so. So this is one thing that I really do like about him, and the five percent dodge is a very, is a very very small thing. But if you're in the front line, a little bit of mitigation, it's 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 better to have it than not. So if you really want to play Beast. I think he does a he, I think he does a, a decent job for you in the two-handed warrior role. And for the purpose of this video, we are going to carry him on through character creation screen. So we have the build preset here down as knight. This determines a couple of things in the game. As you can see, Beast is holding a two-handed weapon. This means that inside of the chest, as long as I carry the knight build preset through character creation screen, I'm going to find a two-handed weapon inside of the chest on the Meriwether. The other thing build presets determine is when you are trying to recruit new characters. If they have the build preset, they will come with the setup in character creation screen. So they will carry battering ram, battle stomp, and crippling blow. In terms of your attributes, strength is going to increase the damage of strength scaling we weapons. So that includes swords, axes, maces. So one handed, two handed, strength is going to increase the damage of them. Outside of the combat, it's going to allow you to carry more items. So it's it's convenient as well. 
For the most part, you will not be putting any points into finesse or intelligence. So you will be focusing most and all of your points into strength. Constitution is a little bit of a trap. There is no need for you to put any points into constitution. Memory. Now, as a warrior, you're not really going to need to put too many points into memory. But if you do desire a skill, then put some points into memory to get it. But as a general rule of thumb, you want to minimize the amount of points that you put into your memory because by doing so, you're taking points away from your strength. Wits, you are going to maximize after you've maximized your strength because it increases your critical chance. In terms of your abilities, personally what I like to do from the very very beginning, I like to go one point into Warfare, and I like to go one point into Polymorph. Civil abilities you can choose to do with what you will, I'm not going to cover that during this video. But I would go one point po uh, Polymorph, one point into Warfare. Polymorph gives us an additional attribute. So we start the game off with 14 strength. In terms of your gear, you're going to be looking for stuff with strength, critical chance, warfare, two-handed, scoundrel. Those are the primary stats you're going to be looking for on gear. That's going to increase your damage. In terms of the build itself, what stats do I want to increase my damage? What's going to give me the most damage? Now, there's a there's two very different answers here, and it very much depends on one particular skill. Now, it, it very much depends on whether you're going to use Enrage or not. Enrage is a skill that gives you 100% chance to crit, it costs 2 AP to use, and it mutes your character. But the key word here is it gives you 100% chance to crit. Now, if you wish to use Enrage, which I highly recommend you do, the, the focus points of your combat abilities is going to be much different. If you are critting 100% of the time, you are going to be wanting to put your points into two-handed first. It increases your damage by 5%, which is additive, but then also it adds a 5% critical multiplier. With Enrage, you're critting 100% of the time, so this will always apply whilst you have Enraged up. If you choose not to go Enraged, the best route is to go Warfare. Warfare increases physical attacks by 5%. This is multiplicative. So if you have Enrage, Two-handed is the better route. If you do not have Enrage, Warfare is the better route. Either way, if you have maxed your Warfare first, your second points, your secondary stat maximizer will be two-handed, and vice versa. If you have the Enraged, you're going two-handed first, once you've maxed two-handed, you would then look to maximize your warfare. Obviously, with other abilities and stuff, you will just put points here and there as, as much as you need them, but typically as a warrior, you won't really need to be doing that too much. In terms of your starting skills, I personally would go with the core of Battle Stomp and Bullhorns. Battle Stomp is 
an extremely good crowd control, it hits multiple enemies. Bullhorns gives you very good mobility and also hits multiple enemies. And then I, I think you can choose what to go with on your own accord. Some people choose Tentacle Lash, I personally do not like this because you cannot crit without Savage Sword Leech and Savage Sword Leech is not going to be a talent that you're going to be picking up anytime soon. Also this is a reason why I do not take Tentacle Lash is because I do take Enrage and like I said Enrage mutes you so you would not have access to Tentacle Lash but again if you do not use Enrage feel free to take Tentacle Lash. However personally you could also go Battering Ram for the additional crowd control or you can go Crypt and Blow for a slightly more powerful basic attack that can potentially AoE. So as long as you have these two as a as the core I think you're free to choose whichever to fill the last slots. In terms of your talents, there's a good number that you can start from the beginning of the game with. If you're an experienced player, or you have decent knowledge, Glass Cannon is going to be a very good option. Though for me personally, even though you can achieve this, even being in melee range, I personally just, just don't like to have my Glass Cannon as melee characters. So personally, I would look at taking Executioner from, from character creation screen. So, there we go, that concludes the video, hope that you've enjoyed it, hope this has been helpful to you in some way. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.